Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Duke Silver. Today we're going to be playing Bearskin. So what Bearskin says, it basically gives your, your lowest power characters a buff at the start of every combat. Um, and any, anything that's tied for the lowest all get the buff. So there's like sort of like a little sub game that you play with Bearskin where you try and get as many characters on your board uh, to be tied for the lowest power as possible to try and maximize that stat gain. Uh, if you can play the sub game really well, then you can get a lot of stats out of uh, out of bear skin, which is really nice. Um, generally, like something like owl isn't really something that you want. Um, I mean, sprouts kind of scale at different different paces as well, so that's like also something that I think some people stay away from. But um, to be honest, on level two, I don't really pay too much attention to the hero power. The plus one plus zero like is good. You're gonna get it on something no matter what. So like, I'm not too uh, too. Uh, too fussy over uh, over what what exactly gets the buff, um, and yeah, here here we get a couple, or we have one thing on three power right now. We definitely don't want to combine here. We want to keep to keep the two sprouts uh, separate so they can keep getting buffs. And uh, we're gonna get three things with three power here. We're gonna have to bench this one power owl though. Oh, I figured I should take the uh, take the pair anyways with the two gold that we had. Um, we are gonna lose this fight unfortunately, dropping down to twenty one relatively early. Um, we do get a, uh, a pretty interesting shop here. Um, we're just gonna jam the future vision since I mean we're gonna be able to get uh, the plus uh, plus three plus two buff from being level four onto uh, three different things. And also if our uh, if our chameleon can slay on that turn, then that we, we get a level five character very very early here on three point two. I mean it's a BLT, so it's not like the most game breaking um, five on, at this stage in the game. Which is a little bit sad. Like uh, something like a haymaker would have uh, would have absolutely busted the game wide open for us, or or even like a like a good slay character or like a like a nocturne this early would have been uh, kind of absurd. It's just like that little bit of scaling and um, you can kind of build around that if you get it early. Or like a, like a clack would have been fantastic. But anyways, we get we get the BLT. It's still fine. It's still good to have. Um, and we could uh, we could potentially new you it later on into a, into a random six, nice and early. Do a little Fortuna impression. Um, yeah, but we're gonna pick up a. Uh, I mean, we don't want to roll too much, of course, because we took the future vision. So we're just playing our shops. Uh, we get to pick up a couple. We pick up a couple of angel warriors here, which we're trying to balance the uh, the power on. Unfortunately, we don't quite get to uh, get to twelve on our lowest things. So, but we do get a few different things at eleven power there, getting the uh, the plus three plus two buff. Again, we're just going to play our shops, and uh, we're actually in a pretty decent spot for uh, for Kiv here. We've got a couple royals anyways. Excuse me. Um, yeah, there's also an Uther in the shop, which uh, which I am pretty interested in with the uh, with the Kiv. Um, well, we're going to take the lose the war here. I'm not going to play too weak, though. I figure, like... It's better to err on the side of caution um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to, to uh, lose the war, especially like once you start getting later in the game, because you can take really big hits if you try and throw a fight and it, they end up being stronger than you realize. Um, the slam meal is really nice on Kiv, of course. Like every time, uh, every time we get a bonus attack or or even a regular attack, of course, uh, if it slays something, then it's gonna, just going to get better and better. The uh, the I mean the 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 base slay amulet with uh, with only plus one attack per. Uh, Per hit isn't exactly the greatest, but it's still a little bit of scaling and makes uh, makes subsequent slays uh, more likely. I'm gonna take a narc here. Um, not too much else that we're really really uh, excited about, so I think we're gonna burn another roll. I'm uh, going to going to six next turn is a little awkward because I mean we don't wanna we we do want to see some level six shops before losing our XP here, and so we are gonna we're just gonna take the uh, the Uther. That's gonna. I mean, it's gonna make the uh, the kids big uh, for this turn, or until uh, until the Uther dies at least. And it's also Uther is a royal. I'm pretty sure most of the good supports, if not all of the good supports, outside of uh, Watson, is Watson. I don't know if Watson's good. Watson might be neutral. Uh, I'm pretty sure all the good supports, anyways, are uh, are all good boosters. I should say, are uh, are royals as well. So, so they work. The uh, the sort of round table boost build works really well with Kiv. All right, we do. Uh, we don't really get much on uh, on our level six shops, so that's a little bit disappointing. But that's okay. We got lots of stuff on five that we could uh, we'd be happy to pick up. 
Um, the second narc is definitely one of them. And we find Divine Messenger, which is exactly the treasure that we were hoping for with this setup. Now uh, our entire front line is supported by Kiv, so we can, uh, we can we get two free attacks whenever they attack into uh, into any any of our royals and kill them. Um, we also did fire off a new U on the uh, on the narc there. That's how we got the uh, the upgraded mirror in the during the cut there. Uh, there's another there's an alliance band in the shop as well, which we are gonna take. We took this uh, this mermaid of course as well. That's gonna allow the uh, the Kivs to get some scaling. Get some scaling going. Plus two, plus two per uh, per slay is uh, is pretty good. And with the uh, with the alliance bands, like hopefully we'll be able to slay a lot of stuff. Slay at least a couple. And uh, I mean, as long as that Uther is alive, like even once the mermaid di mermaid di uh, once the mermaid is gone, we uh, our kids do still have the uh, the mermaid ability, which is nice. That's uh, worth noting anyway. So once we finally move the er Uther to the back. Gonna get a triple archives and get, jam two rings there. Unfortunately, not a lot of action here on the level five treasure front. There's not really much else we want out of level five. Like, I mean, I think a philosopher's stone or uh, maybe a shard would have been uh, would have been ideal. But um, we're just gonna take Holly's gold and nerf Holly's gold with only three uh, only three per turn. But it's still something. We're gonna we're just gonna take a Rapunzel a Rapunzel. I mean, she's a uh, an unyielding royal, and with divine messenger, she is pretty large. I mean, we only have two uh, two supports or two boosters right now, but uh, she's a good uh, a good filler unit, anyways, for uh, for what we really want, which is like King Arthur. I mean, Merlins, and just like we want to fill our front row with supports or with boosters. Uh, we'll take another Uther for sure. Again, it's just a royal a royal booster that we can throw up, up front. Um, there's the unit that we really want, Merlin. Merlin is, uh, of course, going to add extra instances of all our uh, all our boosts that we've got going uh, on the front and back row. So that's a huge, huge boost in stats for us. And we're gonna we're gonna pick up another Kiv and just throw Merlin in front. Again, as long as this Uther in our, our back line is uh, is alive, we're gonna get the aura and boost effect from the uh, from the Merlin, um, even once it's gone. Right now, it's just uh, let's just try and find more uh, try and find more Merlins. Uh, Gwyn would be a really good pickup as well. Um, King Arthur again would be uh, would also be ideal. We get to triple up our Uther. Uh, we'll go for a Hero Helix. So we're gonna get a little bit of stats out of our, our Bearskin uh, ability. Like it's still it still is applying stats every turn to something. We haven't really uh, paid much attention to it in a while, but but that is still some. Um, the Hero Helix is mostly just an investment for the future. I mean, uh, changing changing heroes is already pretty powerful, so I actually don't mind speculating on a hero helix uh, pretty often. Uh, we got a really strong dog board here, though, so they're uh, they're going to be a little bit too much for us. With uh, they, it looks like they collected a lot of dogs in a very short amount of time. Pretty sure I scouted them the turn before, and they had one herding dog, one narrow, and one good boy. So the fact that they have the upgraded herding dog, another herding dog, and another narrow, they had a very productive turn. Consider uh, speculating on the chair here, and I think we're just we're going to like we're we're so weak to backline disruption that uh, we definitely need to uh, to be prepared for uh, for people. We saw somebody with a fire mage already, of course, as well. Um, we're gonna get rid of this mirror. It's not it's kind of worn out. It's welcome at this point. We get a King Arthur, and we get to lock another Merlin, which is fantastic. But we got uh, we got sort of a mage board that looks like they're looks like they're trying to go for. Uh, for just book scam, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. This they uh, they knock out a lot of our characters with uh, with spells, so definitely not great for us. Good RNG for the opponent, but hopefully, uh, hopefully it only lasts or hopefully it only works uh, works so many times. Um, we get to pick up another uh, Arch or, uh, King Arthur here. We're gonna grab we're gonna grab a Gwyn. Gwyn's gonna be really good. As much as I would like to just play uh, the second Kiv. Um, I think uh, I think we gotta we gotta put the uh, the Gwyn in the back row. It just it puts so many stats on our front row, and uh, those stats going onto onto our back row from uh, from these King Arthur's I think uh, is a little bit too much to uh, to give up for uh, for just for for some a couple extra bonus attacks because realistically it's like two maybe three bonus attacks that we get. We definitely get two because we have two ranged royals. So the ranged ranged and unyielding royals are, are definitely ideal. Um, for uh, for Kiv, as uh, they have to be attacked into. 
to uh, to die. King Arthur, of course, that's what we've got. Uh, King, King Arthur's on the uh, backside because uh, they will attack and and trade themselves into things. All right, we switched into Freya as well. So uh, I mean, the Hero Helix isn't doing a lot, but we do get two level six treasures out of this. Out of this, unfortunately, we're gonna have to skip the second one. But the Mage Gloves is gonna be really good here. It puts a ton of stats on our front row. And we're going to get to triple up a, another Kiv here. Unfortunately, nothing there that we we want either. So we're just going to skip it and roll and try and roll and hope for, hope to find uh, one more uh, one more support or boost piece for us. And we get rewarded with our uh, with a Merlin immediately here. And there's the Merlin triple, which we are happily going to take. Just going to sell the Slamulet. It's pretty useless at this point. We can get out a Hero Helix for the Magic Scarf. Magic Scarf is going to give us a huge boost in stats. Of course, that's going to double our uh, our Merlin auras, which uh, which are each giving giving our uh, our boost uh, two times strength, and so those are going to be doubled. I believe that gives them four times strength, so it's like four extra instances of boost for each boost being applied to our board, resulting in a lot of stats. You can see there's just a lot of stats all over our board. <laughs> it's, it's spread out pretty well, and we get another Merlin, which we are of course going to replace Kiv with. I mean, that's another another instance of aura here that's going to get doubled by the magic scarf and just continue to uh, enhance our uh, our stats here. We don't really have a lot of uh, ways to improve beyond our, our from the spot. Um, I mean, getting the, the Gwyn tripled, of course, and uh, and getting, I mean, of course, the Merlin tripled would be would be really good. And honestly, like eventually, if like if we're if we're talking like like super super late game, you probably just replace the uh, the Kiv with uh, with another Golden Merlin if uh, if you get the, the option, because the bonus attacks uh, probably don't matter as much as uh, just getting um, just the most possible stats. Uh, we do manage to weather the storm of uh, spells that time, um, thanks to our uh, thanks to our hero attack. But uh, but yeah, the spell scam really uh, really doing doing some work there for the opponent. Honestly, their board isn't, like, at first glance, isn't super impressive, but the, st the spells, it just seem to be, uh, seem to be getting it done. And we're gonna get another Merlin here, but the Gwyn is, uh, is much better. It's just gonna, it's just enhancing our, uh, enhancing our boost uh, a little bit too much to, uh, to take out. I think uh, the Merlin makes our backline a little bit bigger, but the uh, the stats on the uh, stats on the uh, the King Arthur uh, going onto the backline, um, the stats the stats are significantly higher with the Gwyn in the back, anyways, on the King Arthur, which translates to the backline, anyways. So it's it's a tough to tell exactly which one is is more numbers without um, without working out the math, but don't really have time for that, so. We just kind of go go by instinct, anyways. <laughs> um, we're gonna pick up a second Gwyn here, so that's nice. Once we, if we can get that triple, then uh, then we'll. Oh yeah, this and this is a board. Sorry, this uh, we saw Savitri earlier that I kind of uh, I was talking over. Um, they did have an end of the rainbow, so this is after a thousand gold turn. I expected them to be extremely strong, and they were strong, but it looks like looks like they didn't quite fill out their board in the most optimal way with their uh, with their thousand gold turn. Um, I'm just not a big fan of those phoenixes on the uh, on the good boy board. I feel like you can do better. I feel like ranged units are probably just better. Um, just like ranged. Uh, I mean, usually it's like it ends up being like a, like a ranged unit and like milk women for me. Um, but if you're if you're doing good boys and you don't have time to uh, to get those uh, those food stats going on uh, on the milk women, then like uh, like a couple Neros and just like the rest of your board as good boys is uh, is extremely powerful. And of course, if you can find the uh, the spell that turns uh, Nero good, then that's also very nice. And I guess like that that only leaves with two with two range characters. Um, we did. Oh, sorry, we put the the King Arthur up in front because they have that Fate Scissors. So we wanted them wanted the the King Arthur to attack first or attack into their board and uh, and die immediately and put those stats on the back row. We also added a flying item to Kiv just to attack their their actual units in the back line because. They don't really have much left after if we take out their backline. Like those uh, those books are are not going to stand up to uh, to our hero to any even hero attack. Like their their toughness is so low. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, we just get they don't get the uh, the 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 perfect spells. They don't get enough scam out of their spells, I should say. And uh, and yeah, we managed to, we make pretty short work of their board when they don't uh, 
when they don't hit uh, hit hit exactly perfectly. Anyways, um, but yeah, let me know if you enjoyed that. Um, this was, uh, I guess, good royal support um, <laughs> comp. Um, I guess this is a Kiv comp. Um, yeah, I think it, it doesn't quite reach the same like uh, like upper upper limit stat wise as like a good as like a b multiple good boys and a bunch of food stats. It also doesn't scale infinitely like food stats can. Um, but I don't know. Uh, you get a lot of ranged characters, which makes you probably a little bit better against scam, but also maybe worse because they can just attack your backline. Um, yeah. A lot, a lot of things do need to come together for this comp to uh, to really be good, but I think uh, I think it's a fun one, anyways. And uh, and like I've said before, I think Kev has been a really good addition. It's really really brought up the stock of these supports uh, again, uh, without without having to do uh, silly li Lady of the Lake stuff. Um, but yeah, again, let me know if you enjoyed it. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff I'm supposed to tell you to do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.